Hello everyone, welcome back to Destiny and it is a glorious day. We have Update 1.1, the beginning of Season 2, and of course the Curse of Osiris expansion, bringing a brand new campaign. Now before we jump into this campaign, there are a lot of changes that have been made today, so in this video we're going to outline the new milestones available for you to complete, as well as some changes in the tower. Let's jump in. Alright, so first up, let's take a look at the new director. We have Mercury now as a destination, and of course, this is where you're going to begin the Curse of Osiris campaign. Also, in the upper right-hand corner, we have an indicator showing us that it's Season 2. It also shows you which of the clan perks you have currently unlocked. Aside from that, we have the Strike menu having an addition, of course, including the Heroic Strikes. The Heroic Strikes are set to power level 270, and interestingly enough, the Nightfall did get upgraded, but it is also at 270 matching the Heroic Strikes. So this is a very interesting situation here, where the only real difference between the Strikes here are going to be the modifiers, and of course, that countdown timer. And alongside that, the Prestige activities have been upgraded to 330 power. Now we can take a look at the Milestones tab, which has a few interesting additions. We have the Clan XP and Nightfall as per usual, we have Call to Arms still and the Flashpoint. Those are going to be your sources for powerful gear. But we have a couple changes. For your additional source of powerful gear, you now have to complete Leviathan or Eater of Worlds. You won't get it for both. So this is something to keep in mind. But to sort of make up for that, we have a brand new milestone for Heroic Strikes, which asks you to complete three Heroic Strikes to get another powerful engram. So overall, it's an increase in powerful gear sources. Now, we do know that there's a milestone for adventures that's most likely unlocked after the campaign. I haven't even begun playing yet, so I'll report back after the campaign if there's more milestones to accomplish. Aside from that, we have some changes to, of course, the Leviathan screen. It is now a screen you can go into, giving you access to different activities. For now, the only activity visible is the main Leviathan raid. If we take a look at the difficulty, it has been upgraded for a recommended power of 300, and the prestige is now at 330. So make sure you're ready for that. Aside from that, we have the second raid layer showing on the screen, but we have the first one still hidden. And again, that's going to be launching in eight days next Wednesday. Now, of course, you might have noticed a Eververse milestone in the director. This is referring to a free engram that Tess will give you when you visit her. And of course, you can see that this is now a new bright engram designed for Season 2. And I was very lucky right off the bat to get some of the new legs that are available at Eververse. I'm not too thrilled about this set of armor, though, I have to say. Here it is on my Titan. It's not bad by any stretch, but it's just more meh than anything else. I'm personally looking forward to the Dawning Armor that's going to be available through Eververse, so that's where I may spend a little bit of silver. And unless I'm mistaken, that should actually be arriving next Tuesday, but we'll have to wait till this week at Bungie to find out when exactly they'll be deploying that. Hopefully they'll be talking about it pretty soon. There are a few new shaders with Curse of Osiris that are exclusive to the expansion, Metallic Sunrise being one of them, and then we have some new ornaments which sort of out all of the exotics that are going to be in the game, and through this exotic ornament, we can tell that this weapon is called Prometheus Lens. This is that solar trace rifle that we've been seeing. Aside from that, we have a new hand cannon, which is very much designed after the Red Death from Destiny 1. And that hand cannon is titled Crimson. And funny enough, the ornament is a little reminiscent of the White Witch. Not quite. It doesn't have the blood spotters that the Red Death did, but it still looks pretty cool indeed. And then we have a few exotic ghosts, which are pretty cool, which have some of their own extra perks. This one, for instance, gives you 10% XP gains. And then we have some new exotic ships, including this crazy Vault of Glass themed ship that I just have to have. That thing just looks way too epic. And then we have, for the first time, exotic ornaments for armor. Now, interestingly enough, I did inspect this armor now. We do have an additional slot, but we still have the shading slot. So, I haven't received any of the ornaments yet, so I'm not sure if you can combine shaders with ornaments. My guess is that it'll sort of override whatever shader you have applied. But let me know in the comments below if you've already received an exotic ornament for armor, and if it combines with shaders or not. That'll be really interesting to see. 
Next up, we have some changes with Master Rahul. Of course, we have the addition of an Engram that you can purchase. I was actually very shocked to see how cheap it is. For 25 shards, you can buy a Legendary Engram. Of course, it's not going to be anything too special. Interestingly, though, we now see this at 300 power. So it looks like they maybe have changed the sort of backwards scaling that happens after you reach the 265 soft cap. I'm a big fan of this because it'll help you round out your collection and infuse them a little bit faster. So this is definitely a welcome addition. Next up, you're going to have a brand new clan banner available to you over at Hawthorne. Go ahead and pick that up. It's got some new perks for Season 2, including things like getting more legendary shards, getting more rewards for defeating Vex, more tokens when you do public events on Mercury, things of that nature. So definitely pick it up so you can start earning your clan XP again. Aside from that, we have some updates to the vendors. We have Shax and Zavala, both carrying the new armor ornaments, which you can apply to not only the set from them, but you can actually apply these ornaments to any armor sets that are a reskin of this. And that includes the Sword Fight 4.1, the Phoenix Strife Type 0, and the Anka Seeker 4. Which is definitely an interesting dynamic, because you don't have to have Crucible gear to apply Crucible ornaments. It's kind of cool to be able to just sort of show off that this is what you're good at without having to grind out the gear. In addition to that, we have a few new weapons at each vendor for Curse of Osiris. I'm going to be going over these weapons in much more detail in a future video, but they are there for you to be able to grind for. Now, of course, the whole Masterwork system and the ability to purchase gear directly from vendors is actually arriving next week on the 12th, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Now, of course, with that, we got a series of patch notes. I'm going to go ahead and save those for a separate video. Sadly, there's nothing super exciting in them. A few fixes here and there and some adjustments on power levels, but I'll pull out the highlights for a separate video. Anyways, let me know in the comments below which of these changes you're most excited about. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time.